uh, I see there, there's been a few questions. Uh, Father Ironheart, uh, where would you like to go first with some of these questions? Yes. So uh, we have some good ones. Let's see. Uh, let's start with the first question we have. Um, because God created Satan, does God love Satan? I think that's a great question to start with. And I'm going to ask Deustin, what do you think about that? God created Satan, so does God love Satan? Hmm. It's an interesting question for sure. Um, we know that, let's see, when God created all things, we read through the account of creation as it's presented in Genesis 1. We see at the end of all things that everything he created, he looked at and saw that it was good. Um, it doesn't tell us about uh, the specifics of creating angels or the heavenly hosts and what that looks like. It doesn't go into specifics about those. But um, we do know that God had, uh, he created and it was good. Now, I think a big key in this question is the word love and what that, what that really means. Because if we look at it from a human perspective of what I think love means and the kind of love I try to attribute to the character of God, um, it, it doesn't seem to make much sense that God would love Satan in the same way I would think that God loves people, if that makes sense. I know I'm using the word a lot. Um, but uh, I, I'd say God, God has and always had a plan and purpose in the creation of Satan. Um, like something that, that really keys me in on all that is always the passage in Revelation that talks about Jesus as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, that everything, it was, it was part of God's eternal plans and purposes. Um, uh, so I would say that God uh, knew that Satan would do what Satan did, that Satan would deceive Eve in the Garden of Eden and, and the whole spiel. Um, but does he love Satan? I, I guess hmm, I guess I would I would actually say I would actually say I think <laughs> and y'all correct me if you have a different opinion on this, but I think I would say he hates Satan. And here's why. I think I would say that he hates Satan because we, we read a lot of places in the Bible where uh, God hates sin. Um, uh, I was in uh, someone's chat, Skywalker, uh, BBC, the other night, and he was talking about uh, God's wrath. He was doing a Bible study on God's wrath, and he was talking about how God uh, must hate, and it reminded me of uh, a Paul Washer quote that I really, really love, uh, talking about that kind of idea, love versus hate. He said, I love children, therefore I hate abortion, which I think is a really good uh, picture of that, that it's not like, it's not this, this anger-filled, sin-contaminated kind of hate, but it's a, I love this, therefore I hate what is contrary to that. I hate what is, uh, I love what is good, I hate what is evil. And because of who Satan is, because he is our adversary, he is an accuser of us, um, of God's people who God loves, I would say, if I had to put a human emotional kind of word on it, I think I would say hate. But those are just some thoughts off the top of my head from a very good question. Uh, but yeah, what do y'all think? Yeah, I would agree. Um, and again, when we're talking about God, I think it's important to keep in mind that we bring in a lot of our own presuppositions and our understanding of what does hate mean or what does something like jealousy mean, right? Like, and we view them in these negative terms because as human beings, we are so like, it, our, our emotions are usually mixed of both really good reasons to feel some way and also really bad reasons, you know, and selfish reasons to feel away. Uh, jealousy, for example, right? Like jealousy is not a bad emotion. We, we associate it with bad emotions because we associate it with, with for us as human beings with something like um, insecurity and, and uh, um, inadequacy in ourselves. Uh, so we, we associate that typically as bad, but we see throughout the Bible, they use that emotion to describe God. He's a jealous God, and it is a good thing. It is a good thing that God is jealous for his people. And in the same way, I think an emotion like hate, we can contrive and mis miscue as a, as a negative thing for us because, you know, God calls us not to really hate a lot of things 
Um, but but here, this is another emotion that, again, I think that we can apply to God and that he can perfectly demonstrate an example. So I think you're right on, Deucin. I think there, in, in some level, God does hate um, both what Satan leads people towards, uh, what he kind of stands to represent, uh, and I think it breaks the heart of God, um, you know, yeah. for, for all that is going on. I'm going to mute my dogs are barking. Sorry. Someone else, go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ironheart or Heels, do y'all have any thoughts on that? Or if not, it's okay. We have other questions, yeah, but right. if you wanted to add anything to it. I, I don't. I don't think I've ever really considered the question. Yeah, it's um, a good question. It is a great question. It's a great yeah, question. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Fuzz had a, uh, and I think this was kind of mm -hmm. said. I was a, a little spacey for the last minute or so, but, <laughs> but Fuzz <laughs> had said that, like, God loves Satan and that he loves his creation, but he also hates Satan. And then you guys had, I think you guys touched on the idea of like how God hates is different than how we hate and, and how God love is different than how we love and, and how we associated different things with those words and stuff like that. So I think that all kind of plays a role. So it's probably like both, but not in ways that we are, would normally ascribe to those things. Right. Um, uh, yeah. So good question. Yeah, good. I think that yeah. was really good. Um, yeah. I think... Uh, let's see that question i think we're tackling later if not we'll bring it up later um uh one second okay. i should be more prepared but i'm not um okay so i think this is a good one this is from j cubed as well he asks um does the existence of satan help answer the question of the existence of evil why or why not mm. And so I'll, I'll slide that to heels, let you tackle that one first. Does the existence of Satan help us answer the question of the existence of evil? Of, uh, I'm not sure I understand. Of the existence of evil? Mm -hmm. He, well, it, originally the, the question said the problem of evil, and then he mm -hmm. said the existence of evil. So I think you could probably tackle it from both, both directions. Okay. Um... Uh, I'm still not really sure how to take the question. Like, is because I've always believed evil existed. Is that mm -hmm. is? So I mean, I I don't know. I I didn't. So maybe uh, maybe a better way to phrase it is: do, Is Satan responsible for the evil? Is okay, it, there we go. That's. I think that's a good way to phrase it. Um. Yes and no, maybe. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. Um, <laughs> right, because we see we see like evil enter with rebellion against God in the Garden of Eden, right? Um, Satan comes as the serpent, uh, convinces the woman to eat, therefore rebelling against God, therefore the introduction um, of evil in the world. Um, then we could also go and, and argue um, that this was the plan from the beginning to, to get Jesus to come and save us. And, and, um, and, and so I would say that Satan is responsible, but I, I think one of the questions we're going to get into a little bit later, and I don't want to jump the gun too much, but it, is that the devil doesn't actually force us to do anything that's outside of his power. And so evil comes from our own like human choice, right? Um, and, and so I think that the devil is certainly a deceiver. I believe that he speaks, I mean, exactly like we see happen with Eve in the garden. He came and he put lies into her head and he convinced her to make the choice to then sin and rebel against God. Um, so I definitely think that the devil's there and he's present. And, and I think a lot of times he speaks to us through culture. He speaks through us through, um, maybe it's because I'm used to speaking to teenagers, but through like peer pressure and through things of that sort to lead us to make evil decisions and to rebel against God and, and ultimately to sin. Um, but I don't think we ha we can possibly give him credit for all the evil in the world. Humans are, are we're very capable of producing evil ourselves. Yeah, we do just fine on our own. <laughs> yeah, we do just fine. We don't need your help, okay? Right. I think part of maybe yeah. Jacob's question that he was asking too is like, mm -hmm. you know, we're moving as a society more and more. We we blur the lines of what is good and what is mm -hmm. evil, you know, in and of itself. And maybe part of when I read Jacob's question, it was, uh, does does the fact that Satan lives and what he does kind of help unblur that line? That there really is a definition of evil, you know, and good. Mm -hmm. And I think... Uh, I think that's, again, we, like the original question asked, giving Satan too much credit on something, mm -hmm. uh, it's not that Satan himself helps define what is evil, but rather it's looking at our God and how good he is and holy and just and having a good standard, like a perfect of this is good. God is good. And anything less than that we begin to see as, as you know, evil, wrong, less than good. 
uh, not good. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so that's the standard. I think that we should kind of mm -hmm. orient and, and as Christians kind of give the credit to and not so much Satan being the great yeah. deceiver, you know, it was like, oh, OK, now we could really understand what bad is, um, because I think mm -hmm. even if Satan didn't exist, you know, like you kind of mentioned uh, as humans, I think we know when we miss the standard of God, when we fall short of right. the glory of God. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's that's a great point, because it's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something we talk about a lot of times is like it, it's not that God is the ultimate good and the devil is the ultimate bad and it's this you know universal struggle and who's gonna win it's not like the devil is not god's counterpart he is not right um he's not the know, foil right exactly um so yeah it, that that's actually something i'm surprised we none of us thought to say earlier <laughs> i never crossed my mind but <laughs> yeah the the devil is not this this ultimate evil counterpart to god um mm -hmm. And, and so in that, yes, it, it does, I think, help to give us an understanding of the existence of evil, that yes, there is such a thing as evil in this world. Um, so yeah, no, I think, think that's a great question. And yeah. I think we could go really far with that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Well, because we've we, seen it we've... so much in, in our world, in American uh, culture, mm. you know, especially in things like evangelism. If you look at tracks uh, or these ideas of like, you'll see God and Satan, you know, arm wrestling and it's in a lock between the two. And your decision is going to be what, what pushes it one way or the other. Who's going to own this world, God or the devil? Or I've seen like tracks even around like this time of year when it's time to vote. And it's like, okay, here's the ballot. It's God and with a checkbox and the devil with a checkbox. Who's going to win? It's up to you. Oh, and it's like, we, mm -hmm. we do not have that much importance in the grand cosmic scheme of things. Uh, our vote is not going to swing who's going to win the cosmic <laughs> battle, God or the devil. It's not even a battle <laughs> that, that is being right. fought at this point. It's one that's already won. Right, exactly. That, that's a key thing to remember through this whole conversation. It's already won. 